Okay, in this video, I want to show real quick how to use the Micro 800 simulator in the CCW or Connected Components Workbench software. So if you have installed the software on your computer, downloaded it and, and installed it, then the next step would be to open it and to, uh, to create a project and create a project for the uh, Micro uh, 800 simulator. So this is what you'll see when we uh, when you first open up CCW. You should get this um, kind of home screen or start page, as it's called. You have a couple options right here: new, uh, new project, open existing, discover any recent projects that you've already created. Kind of get listed here. Um, you also have some uh, some support over here in getting started. You have the uh, some training videos and some sample code as well. So I invite you to kind of just you know, play around with it and click on some things and just kind of see what you discover. Um, but if you're ready to start, we will click on new, we'll hit new. And it comes up with a, with a default project name. It usually goes project and then the, whatever next one in order is, you can rename this whatever you want. Um, I will just call it simulator. Uh, it also has a default um, location where it installs the, the, the file. You can change that location as well. I'm going to say create. So once you create the project, you have to add a device. So CCW allows you to do multiple things from Rockwell. They, you can do controllers, you can do drives, you can do starters safety components, as well as graphic terminals. So uh, we're doing a controller. So we're gonna choose controllers. And then under controllers, we have um, several members of the Micro 800 family, the 8, 10, 20, 30, 50, and 70. For the simulator, we're gonna go under the Micro 850. If we were doing this with the, with the uh, actual physical PLC that we have in the lab, we're going to choose the H20. But again, for the simulator, it belongs, uh, the simulator is under the 850. And it happens to be the very last choice with a dash SIM behind it. So you want to choose the SIM. If you don't choose that, if you choose any other one, then you're choosing a physical, real controller and not the simulator controller. So I highlight that. It kind of gives me a little detail of what it is I'm choosing. And we must hit this select button in order to actually select it. And then we'll say add to project. So it's creating the project, building whatever um, structure required for the simulator. So our first uh, kind of thing we, we get when we create this project and add the device is we kind of get the, the, uh, the devices um, kind of just basic properties screen here. So uh, this just kind of gives us a picture of what the simulator looks like or what your controller would look like if you're choosing something else. We got our name, which we could change at this point, some details about it, versions, as well as the uh, some additional configuration set points that we might need to make here. Typically, we don't have to worry about that um, at this point, but there are some additional um, configuration set points perhaps you need to work on on, on some of your uh, real projects that you might work on. Um, so two things to really get the simulator going. Um, one, we have to start the simulator. And then two, of course, we would have to you know, create a program to actually download to the simulator. But this video is just going to show you how we would actually start the simulator and get connected to the simulator um, as if we're going to make that download. Um, so to do that, we have two ways to start the simulator. One is we can come up here to Tools, and we can choose Micro 800 Simulator. That will actually start the simulator uh, in a separate window. The other way to do it is right here. You have a Start Micro 800 Simulator uh, button on the menu bar as well. It doesn't matter which one you do. Um, I'm going to choose this one. Now, this opens up a separate window and it's a Micro 800 simulator. So we get an actual picture of what the simulator looks like. Um, we get the inputs on the top, the outputs on the bottom. 
we have these plugins. So if I had configured these plugins right here, then you might see some additional, um, you know, IO options being populated in, in these plugin spaces. So at this point, the very next thing we need to do is we need to start the simulator. All right, so we just opened it, but we didn't actually start it or power it on, I should say, and get the right terminology there. So we're going to power on the simulator. So right now it's in a, uh, it's in an off state. You can tell that because nothing's lit up. None of the, these are all black. None of these are lit up. So I'm going to press the device. I'm sorry, I'm going to press the power on button. Now, this very well could be happening could happen to you. It was happening in, in, in the class and uh, this is a, a known issue and it says that the uh, Ethernet IP port 44818 is not available because it is already allocated to the RS links in G. So to, to get through that little issue you're going to do control delete and you'll hit the task manager and we will go under um, if you're in Windows 10, we'll go under details and we will scroll down until we find RS links NG. And if I can catch it right, yep, I'm going to uh, highlight it and then uh, it keeps bouncing around. Come on. I'm going to hit end task and it says, do you want to end RS links NG.exe? We'll say yes in process. When I do that, I can kind of immediately press the start button. And I say immediately because the rslinks ng.exe comes right back in uh, very quickly after I uh, turn off the process. So if you can kind of catch that quickly, you can start it. It's a little bit of a quirk. Um, I don't know if it's just a, a buggy thing in the version 13 or not, but if that's happening to you, that is the, uh, the easy workaround. So now we're powered. That our little power button has turned green. Our power LED is lit. Um, it's possible you might have a red fault light showing on yours. It's okay. We will that'll go away in a bit. Um, you probably should not have the run light on unless you've already been you know playing with the simulator before you watch this video and, and figure it all out. The run light should not be on right now. The other thing to note is that it gives it a IP address. So uh, this is basically taking the IP address off of your computer. So, uh, so you, you don't, you won't do anything here. You're not going to change anything. That is the IP address of the simulator. So to get connected to the simulator, we're going to, if we go back to the CCW software, we want to make a connection to that simulator because at some point we have to program. We're going to write a program and we want to be able to send that program to the simulator and have the simulator actually, um, you know, test the code. So we're going to do, we need to do a, con we need to connect. Um, so if we hit connect, and if you haven't made a connection before, it's going to pull up basically a, um, a path for you to choose. You have to choose, you know, what are you going to connect to? And you should see this kind of come up. And we've got a couple of options. We got Ethernet, uh, AB, ETH1, AB, ETH, IP1, and Ethernet. It doesn't really matter, of course, in USB, which would be a USB, physical USB serial cable connection. It doesn't really matter if it's um, which one of these you choose. I'm going to choose Ethernet. Um, so it's 192, 168, 8638. That matches. Um, what I had back here, right? So I'm going to just highlight that and I'm going to say, okay. So what happens is it should put that path right here in the, um, uh, underneath the connect button. So that way we know the path and then, and then it's going to kind of continue the connection. Now, the very first time it is going to ask you, Hey, you know, the current pro current project doesn't match what's, you know, you know, what you have. Um, there's a mismatch between what you have configured here and what you have configured in the actual simulator. Do you want to download the current project? We'll say yes. Again, there's nothing done. There's no program written yet, but it is going to go ahead and make a download and kind of at least just establish the simulator 
kind of based on what we've told it so far here. And it's still doing its uh, connection. It says, hey, the project is in the controller will be overwritten. Do you want to download? In this case, yes, we will choose download and it will um, overwrite. Again, there's no program in the, in the project. So it's really not doing anything um, to the controller. And we are now uh, downloaded. So you could see the bottom uh, download, one succeeded, zero failed, zero update, zero skip, zero error. So that's good. Everything went good. So we are actually connected to the controller and we are have downloaded to it. You don't really know anything's happening. I will you know, admit there's really no, no lights or anything here to let you know what's going on. But in our next uh, in our kind of our, our next step or our next lab, we will create some code, we will download to it, and then you'll be able to see that actually executing um, live through the simulator.